and this is like the whole issue with EULAs. And I thought about this a while ago. Well, let me do this right here. Yeah. And I thought about this a while ago, like long way back in the past when gaming was actually good. There was a time when I noticed that there was an element of my games that shifted very jarringly. But since I was younger, I didn't pay too much attention to it because I didn't understand it. And that was in when I was playing Dead or Alive 3 or 2 Ultimate. I think it was, Dead, it was Dead or Alive 3, I believe. But 2 Ultimate was the game where I couldn't skip it. When I first played Dead or Alive, you know, like back in the day when you start up a game, let's say on a Dreamcast, you would see the people who made the game and the name of the studio and then the name of the publisher. And for the most part, you could generally skip through it and be like, oh, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I just want to play the game. You know, because you're a fucking... 12 year old kid now when i got to dead or alive 3 on the original xbox there was there was like you know the whole team ninja logo and all that stuff but then there was this long ass page document that i've never seen before in my life and it was like and it was basically the precursor to what a eula is today now i believe in dead or alive 3 you could skip it but in dead or alive 2 ultimate you could not skip it. So I had to sit there and wait for this shit to scroll up for like a solid minute and a half. None of it I would read because at this point, I'm still like a 13 year old kid. I'm like, I just want to see titties and knock motherfuckers off the side of buildings. I don't know what any of this shit me like. The only thing I knew that I understood was that this was legal crap. And I realized that over the course of time, since I noticed that back on the original Xbox, up till now, gaming has become so convoluted and complicated and bloated with legal precedents that you could see, like, for example, I have uh, on my other computer, I have Resident Evil 4, the original one from 2005. If I click play, because I already have it downloaded. If I click play, I get a screen that says, please read this agreement in its entirety. You must agree to the terms of the EULA to play. Resident Evil for 2005. This was a traumatizing coming of age moment for a mortal. It <laughs> it was, man, because I'm like, you know, I just want to play video games, man. But when you're when you're growing up, and like this is one of the weird things about time that I kind of see why it fucks with so many people as they get older. When you see things at one point where it was where it used to be versus where it is now, and there's a whole ocean of people who just don't seem to notice and it it, it kind of makes you feel a little trippy it's like yeah i can't be the only one realizing how fucked this is right you know why isn't anyone else saying anything and when you bring it up in some big capacity everyone looks at you like dude i think you're just being r ridiculous and now you're like borderline uh borderline uh boomer territory because you, you remember your parents like they weren't as um uh nuanced with it because all they would say is, well, back in my day, things were just better because of reasons. But now, you know, with the millennials getting older, we actually have the, uh, we have the, we, we tracked it throughout history. Now you can see it. And so with the, and it's still here for now. Like the, like the entire, uh, what do you call it? Timeline of gaming. You were, I, I was there for these things. And to look at it now, it's just like, uh, hold on, man. <laughs> something's, something's not adding up. But, okay. And, and this, this right here, I'm, I'm scrolling through it right now. I can't show you on like this computer, but it's on a separate computer. I have another monitor. But this thing, you like, you have, Scrolling through all this shit, end user license agreement, please read these blah, 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 carefully upon playing a game, software program, personal, blah, blah, blah. And just like how Lewis Rossman here, over here, describes, if you were to actually read this fucking EULA before purchasing, you probably wouldn't purchase it. Because technically, it covers everything you could possibly do, not allowing you to really do anything but play the game. It's almost surprising that they even allow streaming. I'm going to scroll down here to number six, termination. The users may at any time terminate this EULA by uninstalling the program from their personal computer. 
Capcom reserves the right without notice and in their sole discretion to terminate the EULA upon one or any breach of the provisions provided hereto. In such case, the user shall immediately stop using the program and shall uninstall the program from their personal computer. And from whatever they say in there, if you do something they don't like, they have the authority or freedom to stop you from using it, which kind of, which is a direct contradiction into the idea of ownership, purchasing something. Because remember, the, the great digital world that everyone wants to like, you know, everyone thinks is like an upgrade from physical. There is no EULA when you buy a physical game. There is no end user license agreement. Uh, you know, like it's almost like buying a car. <laughs> when you buy a car, you have to sign off on all types of shit before you can drive out the bitch. All right. And that's what this EULA, that's what or any EULA looks like. And just like what Lewis Rossman says here, like they hide a lot of that stuff in there because they know for a fact no one who plays video games, you know, young people between the ages of, I'll say, 10 to now 34, is going to read it. Can't they just remotely disable physical games to via update? Nowadays, yeah. But back in the day, when you, I'm talking like, let's sixth generation and back. Seventh generation was the beginning of the end for a lot of this shit. That's when digital updates and stuff became, well, it started to become normalized. It was new. It was better then because there was no, it was, because it was new, there was really no regulation for it yet. But as time went on, the industry or the uh, publishers got more and more protections while gamers continued to get shat on over and over and over. So it's, uh, and this is one of the main things that people like me try to fight for and like call out. But the problem isn't just that these companies do that. A lot of gamers just either don't know or don't care. And what really hurts is that it's a lot of gamers that are around my age. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, how is it that you made it this far and don't, care about the uh sanctity of your hobby 